the reason this is important is the compensation plan matters a lot. If you do a bunch of work, let's say you get really good at network marketing and you recruit, you know, 50, 100, 300 people, the compensation plan's going to make the difference and have a huge impact for your income. It could be the difference between earning thousands and thousands of dollars or uh, hundreds of dollars. Actually, it's more like earning tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands compared to just earning thousands. So I had a friend that was in a company and he was a number one earner and they had bonuses and the biggest bonus they had was $16,000. And he eventually left that company. But, you know, if he had just started in a company that had a, uh, a lot more bonuses and a lot more money, then when he started getting some traction and being successful, he would have made a whole lot more money. So make sure that you pick a network marketing company that has some some good income. So these are the four types of compensation plans that are common in the network marketing industry. You have the unilevel plan, the matrix plan, or force matrix is what it's sometimes called, the breakaway plan, and the binary plan. So we're going to go through all these and um, show you exactly how they work, and hopefully in a way that can make you understand them a little bit better. So I've done this PowerPoint, and hopefully it'll help you with your thought process as you make this decision. Uh, key terminology, you've got distributor, rep, sponsor. Basically, when you join a company, you're going to be called, you could be called anything, a team player. You could be called a consultant, distributor, rep. You know, any of those things, that's just referring to you as a business owner or a small business owner. Your upline is who enrolled you and who's above them, who's in your direct line of sponsorship. We'll talk a little bit more about what that means later. And then your downline is anybody that you've enrolled and they've enrolled and it's grown. So as your organization grows, that's your downline. Ranking and rank advancement, that's just when you hit different uh, pay scales in your compensation plan. And people think if they get to a certain rank, they're going to get paid a certain amount of money. But the key is you've got to you've got to maintain that rank. So. It's not just hitting the rank, it's hitting the rank and maintaining the rank. So a lot of times people fluctuate in what rank they are. And when you talk about what rank are you, usually people will tell you the highest rank that they've hit. It doesn't necessarily mean that that's the rank that they're at right now. Width and depth, that's, you know, width is how wide you can build your business and depth is how deep you can build your business. So that's very simple, self-explanatory. Overflow and spillover, if you've never been in this industry, that just refers to when people are put into your organization below you and you get to benefit from the volume that they create. However, they're not really in your they're in your downline, but they're not in your personal line of sponsorship. And you, you want a company that offers overflow and spillover because that that helps your team grow faster. Commissionable volume. That's the points that are associated with any volume that goes through an organization. This is how you get paid off your commissionable volume. Now, in a true pyramid scheme, there's no product flowing. So one way, you know, especially in a company that offers multiple products, the easiest way to figure out compensation is to attach points to those products. So you might have a more expensive product that's worth 50 points. And you might have a less expensive product that's worth 20 points, for example. And so as those points add up, that's how you get paid. So it depends on what people are ordering each month, you know, what what they go through, what, you know, it, it just adds up. So that's something you want to pay attention to. And then pay cycles, how often do they get paid and how do the pay cycles work? Is it once a week, once a month? And, and what causes a pay cycle? We'll go over all that. So this is the Unilevel plan. In this example, it is three levels deep, and so this this person at the top is you, and I don't have, I guess I have a mouse right here. So this is you, and you've sponsored all these people. You sponsor another one, and none of them have really done anything, and then this person starts to build a business. So he starts to put people in. That person puts a bunch of people in. Now, you'll notice in a unilevel plan, 
you may get paid so many levels might be three might be five might be seven whatever it has a a limited depth so you get paid only to a certain point so this is the first level if you look at my mouse this is the second level and this is the third level so any th growth that happens down here you don't get paid for because you don't receive the volume from that now this is your direct line of sponsorship this was you you enrolled this person they enrolled this person and this person enrolled all these people so in a unilevel plan you're going to get paid up to three levels and now let's just say that on the third level a rock star shows up and this person puts in a whole bunch of high quality people and they start building all right you're still only getting paid on three levels but over time in this industry we know people quit so these people start quitting right? and you've still got your line of sponsorship but when you get to this point you're only getting paid on three people you're not getting paid on these other people because they're more than three levels down so you might as well just take that out of the equation because as far as your pay is concerned they're not even there so now you've got an organization that you're not getting paid very much on and you got to start building wide again and hope that the width that you build builds wide and i don't like it because it it stops at a certain point in a breakaway plan it's similar in structure all right this is this is the person we're going to focus on again right here they build a massive organization this is you up at the top you build a team that team starts building a team now in a breakaway plan usually it's based on rank so if you're at this rank if you look down here at the picture at me and someone's at a rank below you that you sponsored or anyone below them everything's good and fine and dandy until they hit your rank or sometimes they hit the rank above you at that point they break away that's why it's called a breakaway plan so in a breakaway plan, that team, you know, this person right here just built a massive team. And let's say this is the month that they actually surpassed you in rank and now they break away from your team. So all of that volume goes away from you and your income takes a hit and you kind of going back to square one. Now, what I don't like about this is it doesn't really foster teamwork because you want people to do well but not too well and it puts you in a constant state of competing which is good but it can backfire because you know not everybody can win and so it's set up to you know you want to help people but let's say you have someone on your team and they're doing really well and you figure out you know a new tool to use or a new something and it's allowing you to recruit more people it kind of fosters the idea of keeping that it fosters selfishness because you don't you want people to grow but you don't want them to grow past you or you lose all of their their volume so we're going to look at a, a plan later that actually fosters teamwork and fosters you want everybody to do better than you so that's a breakaway plan and the force matrix plan this is my least favorite usually they're more than three by two but just to keep this simple i've done a three by two matrix that means that you can go three wide and two levels deep so it has a limited width of three and a defined depth of two so you're going to get paid for those three down two levels now the thing with the force matrix is everybody gets put in the matrix in order so you get signed up and people above you and you fill, start filling in the matrix right so you get three they might not be yours they might be yours these people start signing up. There's a little bit of overflow. Some of them are yours, some of them are not. When you get to the point where your matrix is filled up, then you're full. Now, here's the question. What's your motivation to put more people below these people? There is no motivation because your matrix, matrix is already full. The other thing is, in this type of system, it's, it's kind of attracts the wrong type of people it attracts the people that don't want to do anything so if you're a go-getter and you're a builder it can be quite frustrating because you're working hard to fill up the matrix 
and everyone else is just kind of sitting around waiting for a handout. So I really don't like this plan, but it is one of the more common ones that's in the industry. So you can see here, these are level three and level four. Since it has a defined depth of two, you're not gonna get paid past level two. Now, the binary on the surface seems like the simplest, but it kind of combines all the elements of all of them. So in a binary, you have just two teams, one, two, all right? Now, you start putting people in, the blue refers to your personal recruits. It seems like when you first look at a binary, it seems like you can only get two people, but you can't. You can get as you can build as wide as you want. The difference is when you put in your third person, it goes below your team. So they get credit for the volume of that person too. So every time you put in an additional person, you're helping the other people on the team. So this, this person right here, all these people get to benefit from their orders. So if this person puts in an order that's 100 points in volume or commissionable volume, as we talked about, then all those points will flow through these people and through you. It doesn't hurt you at all. It only helps all these people. So at this point in your organization growth, you get some overflow. Someone from your upline puts someone in. Now, in a binary plan, you have one leg. It's called the power leg. And that's basically the leg that you share with your upline. So it's also called your outside leg. So all these different colors would be people that are put in your organization from your upline. So as your business grows, you get volume points from all these people. Okay. So that's one of the things that I like about a binary. And then everyone is in charge of building their inside leg. So this person here starts building their leg. They don't share this leg with anybody. Right. So you typically have to recruit two people, one on each side, to be active and qualified to get paid. But your your big pay comes from building your inside leg. That's why it doesn't matter when you get in. It doesn't matter if you get in early, get in late. It really doesn't matter because only the people that work are the ones that are going to get paid. So this starts building. And it was a, a while back since I did this PowerPoint. But you see different people show up as builders. That is typical in network marketing. Don't feel bad if your tree looks like this. Your tree is going to look like this. You know, most of your growth is going to come from a handful of people that really want it. And then everyone else will be product users or people that want to build the business, but they just they just don't for whatever reason. This is your power leg. It's grown this big. You put in the same number of people on both sides. But this is the leg that's grown because you're sharing it. This is your inside leg. Now, you start building up your inside leg and notice how all the circles that represent people you sponsor or recruits, they're all blue because you sponsored them all. And you start building and then your builders show up on your inside leg. Now, a couple things that make a binary powerful and a couple reasons why we like the binary so much. So, the binary pays on you have unlimited width, so you can go as wide as you want. And the benefit of doing that is usually these companies offer you an override. Um, they call it a check match or executive check match, whatever. There's an override on how well your personal recruits do. So let's say, for example, the override is 10%. And you get paid 10% of what your personal recruits get paid. So Let's say you recruit 50 people, five of them work, and they earn $100 for the month, right? And you get a 10% override. So you're going to get $10 for each of those people that earned $100. And so that's on top of your team commissions. And it's not taken out of their check. I hope that makes sense. It's just kind of like a bonus. So there is a benefit to going wide because if you can imagine – as you grow in, in a binary system, as you rise up through the ranks, that executive check match is similar to the unilevel plan. It pays certain levels down. So, you know, the first executive level, you might get 10% of all of your recruits as, an, as a check match. But your 
you rise up to the next rank and you might get paid down one more level. So you might get 10% of all your personal recruits and 10% of all their personal recruits. So it's based and it's based on how much they make. So your goal is to recruit a lot and to help a lot make money. The more people make money, the more you make money. So if you're an executive and you only get paid one level deep, but you have a guy that goes completely crazy and builds up to a $15,000 a month income, then you're going to get $1,500 a month just as a 10% override on that. And that's without your team commissions. And then the other thing that this binary system does is it pays for infinite depth because it's a binary and because of the way it's structured, you're going to get paid on your in a cycle is based on your inside leg. So let's keep with the 10% um, example. As your inside leg grows and your volume grows, the team commissions might be 10% of the volume. So let's say you have a thousand points in volume, you get paid a hundred dollars a month. You get to 5,000 points in volume, that's $500 a month. But it's the volume forever. It doesn't go down three, four, five, six. They keep that for the executive check match. So you get a little bit of that unilevel power, but you get the power of infinite depth. So that means if you have a huge organization, and, and I'm talking massive, let's say 3,500 levels down, somebody gets in and they're a rock star and they go to the top of the compensation plan and they're the, the biggest earner for the company. All the volume that they create and their organization creates goes right up through your organization. So it's going to impact your check. And the longer you build, the bigger it's going to get. And I truly believe, you know, one of the things that Eric Worre says is that $100,000 a year earners used to be far and few between. And now there's $100,000 a year earners all over the place in this industry. And now it's million dollar earners, which is, you know, a little less than 100,000 a month. And I believe that it's going to get to the point because I know of people that are earning, you know, a couple way over $100,000 a month. So as time goes on, and as people are in this industry and in one company for a long time with something like a binary where you get paid for infinite depth. And, you know, this isn't 50 years ago. There's not somebody in a corporate office trying to calculate all this. It's all done by a computer. So it has no problem calculating what the points were, what the commissions are, all that kind of stuff. So I truly believe that there's going to be people in this industry that get to the point where they're earning a million dollars and more per month instead of per year and i think that's going to be the next step so we're getting to the point where million dollar a year earners are a big deal and just like the hundred thousand dollar a year earners i think someone's going to come along just like the guy that ran the four minute mile and they're going to earn a million dollars a month and it's going to show people what's possible in this industry and and that's going to be the new benchmark like can you get to a million dollars a month so that's just something to think of and this is why the binary is so powerful and why we like it the most. The other thing is it creates a sense of teamwork because in this example, and I keep pointing at my screen with my fingers, I'll try to use my mouse. So in this example, these people that start building, this is your leadership team. This is the team that you want to build with. This is the team you want to support the most. You want to focus your energy on the people that are working. You know, don't, this isn't the corporate world. So don't let the squeaky wheel and the person that whines the most and does nothing, get all your attention. Give your attention to the people that are doing the work. And in this example, you know, you would get an executive override on these leadership team people. Now, these people, you wouldn't because you didn't personally sponsor them and they're not in your personal line of sponsorship. But these people, you would get that executive check match. However, you still want to support these people because they create volume for your team and volume is the first way you get paid and volumes, the most sustainable way to create a monthly passive income that doesn't change. So a lot, for example, in our company, the volume, the team commission volume, which is the first way you get paid caps out at $28,000 a week. So if you build a team to $28,000 a week, let's, and, and it all rolls over. 
So let's say you build a team that's creating $40,000 a week in team commissions, right? But you can only get paid $28,000 of that. So the 28,000 is subtracted from your team commission volume. And then what's left over, what did I say, 40,000? So that 12,000 that's left over stays in the account. So if you have a bad week, then that's there to kind of offset that. So that's how you create a residual income stream that doesn't change and doesn't fluctuate is when you get to those top levels and you max out the team commissions, then you can ideally create a, so in my company, ideally, we want to get to the point where we have a more than $28,000 a week in commissionable volume so that it rolls over every week and the weeks that are low, it averages out and it brings those weeks up so that we can get paid $28,000 every single week, week in and week out. So that's the idea. Those are, those are the four compensation types. And, um, Thank you for being here. Please like and subscribe to this channel. Click the notification bar so that you get notified every time I upload a video. I haven't uploaded a whole lot lately, but I'm going to start trying. One of my goals for the next 12 months is to upload more YouTube videos. They won't all be PowerPoints like this. Actually, most of them won't be, but it's kind of hard to explain these compensation models without having some kind of visual to go with it. So thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and uh, I'll see you on the next video. Thank you.